For over a quarter of a century, Shane O'Brien has been entertaining people with music. By day, he's a union iron worker. By night, he writes, plays, sings, and produces songs. He's produced 24 CDs, and this is what the press has said. Tom Branson, O'Brien's approach to music is raw and honest, simple and straightforward, genuine and emotional. Bill Messick, this is some very sweet blues rock music, some of the best I've ever heard. Jim Santella, O'Brien's dedication to melody makes for a beautiful ballad. With his faster, hard rock selections, his voice burns with intensity. Aaron Soule, biker born, music bred. Shane has the ability to be diverse, to write his own life into his own music and magically draw his audience in. He is a true audience pleaser and sounds great. When people talk about Shane, they call him the genuine one. We went down to his jungle studio in San Pedro, California, where we got Shane to kick off his boots and tell us about playing guitar. Shane, when did you start? The history of the guitar for me goes back to uh, my father. My father, uh, he used, used to come home from school and he, he'd come home from Chrysler's, man. He's working a, an auto plant down in, in Detroit. And we lived in Windsor, Ontario at the time. He'd be downstairs, I could hear him uh, playing the <laughs> My dad's playing the little yellow rose of Texas, man. He's reading it in a Mel Bay book. And he did that like for a year. And it just drove me absolutely out of my mind. And I'm about eight years old, nine years old, and I decided, maybe a little older, ten. Then I decided to steal that acoustic guitar off of him. And I went camping with it. We played the little Yellow Rose of Texas all weekend long, me and my buddies. Then when I came home, my dad didn't want the guitar anymore. I think he was setting me up, actually. From then on, I locked myself in a room and still am today. Okay, so who were your influences? Who were your musical heroes? Andre Segovia. Absolutely loved his nylon guitar playing. I could never get it. No way. Michael Lorimer, too. I actually went to a Michael Lorimer master class one time at... Uh, Wayne State University in, in, in uh, Wayne State, Michigan. And, um, I guess it was just cool just to be in the same room and say hi to these guys, you know, and watch them do their master class teaching because I didn't understand the chords they were talking about anyway. But I loved it, man. And, uh, and Hendrix, absolutely. Buddy guy, man. Buddy guy. Or Albert King. Whoo! Uh, what's up? <laughs> You know, when he, when, when he, he, when he'll do that. It's, it's harder to do it on the thicker ones. That's all still one note, but the quarter tone, quarter tone, quarter tone, quarter tone, you know, with a trill. That's, that's Albert King, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Robert Johnson's cool, man, because, you know, his lyrics are, are like street level, right to you. That's, and 145s, you know, talk about emulatable for what blues jam is there around the country that doesn't do a one four five that really came out of a guys like Robert Johnson and Chuck Berry, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> okay, Shane, I've got to ask, what's your favorite guitar? My favorite guitar for years and years and years and years was the 63 SG. I had it. I got it off a band in Toronto called the Imps. Hot drummer, hot bass player, hot guitar player. I had to have his guitar. So I, I went from Detroit to Toronto, man, picked it up, gave him 375 bucks, and here I got a 63 SG, man. I think I did my first two or three or four records with that guitar. Man, that had perfect, perfect, those PF90s, man. They're so quiet, so so perfect. And for getting feedback, if you got the right amp and you know how to control your volume, man, those those volume pods are just perfect, you know? And, and, and the frets, the, the long neck, oh, yeah. But then, but then, but then I got my 62 Stratocaster, and then I got my BB King Lucille. Man, that guitar is awesome. I catch myself going into dreamland just thinking about that damn guitar and with that variable tone switch. And I remember picking up that thing and fretting some chords and going out of tune on it because I'm pressing too hard on the frets and thinking, man, this thing don't hold a tune. And then I'm realizing you got to be sweet with that thing, man. You've got to. That's how you get the woo, that vibrato. You could just make that thing whistle and sing and man, it's so cool. I like my strat still because I love that bar on it, you know. That bar, I tune to the bar on all the time, but that, that Gibson Lucille, man, that's the shit. That's for electric. We didn't even talk about acoustic. There'll be no ticker tape, mm -mm. there'll be no parade today, there'll be no champagne down, no down Main 
country. I got on that Tom Ackman from that great big airplane. Just a few brothers and me. Yeah, I kissed the ground that I knew I'd come back home to. And I think I've seen a few things that had gone wrong. I see young men and women, they be fighting and arguing, babe. They be talking about all the things that, you know, that we had done. But it's all right now. It seems just like the right thing to do. Shane, who are some of the memorable people that you've gotten to play with? Oh, my favorite is Johnny Warner, hands down. I hung out with him for three days, oh my God. That was just a couple years ago. Played with him at BB King's, as a matter of fact. Wow, that guy's so cool. I, when I was a kid, man, I was used to, used to listen to Johnny Winter Live End, whatever the album's called, it's the red one, where he does the medley, you know. And it, with him and Ray Derringer, oh my God, man, I, I must have practiced that when I was 12 and 13 and 14, like, Man, for hours and hours and hours and hours, and here I am, holy cow, 47, 48, and I'm opening up his show. That guy's not only a gentleman, not only a real cool, real deal living legend, but he's also a sharing man. You know what happened on, on, in San Juan, Capistrano? Johnny Winter never, never got paid. The, the promoter did a bad deal, and he was burning Johnny Winter. Johnny Winter says, watch this. Paul Nelson dials the number in the cell phone. Watch this, Shane. Calls up. Hi, BB. How you doing? Wow. Uh, oh, we're we're doing good. Yeah, we're in San Juan Capistrano playing tonight. Uh, you know what? I got to tell you something. I know you don't own the club in Hollywood, but the you know it's a franchise. They use your name. I just thought you should know that they they uh, they didn't pay us for our gig. Oh, I know we've been friends for a long time, BB. Yeah, absolutely, man. I love you too. Oh, really? Well, thank you very very much. Oh, you know, I got to go on, BB, so I'll catch you later. Okay, bye-bye. He looks at me and goes, BB just wired $30,000 into my account. It's paid. The promoter's fired. He'll never do another gig ever again in his life. Wow. I got to witness this across the table. That's Johnny Winter. That's BB King. That's two real legend living legends. Oh, another one I got really close with, by the way, is Buddy Guy. I was playing at the Starboard Attitude. He's playing at Concerts by the Sea. This is in Redondo Beach. We're playing the same night, same time. The bouncer at his club came and got me and brought me into his dressing room between sets. We talked for 20 minutes together. You've really had some interesting experiences that you're playing and performing. How would you describe your music? I think somebody that I love so dearly called it um, psych no, psychedelic acoustic acid blues. <laughs> I think that, the, I just, I, for years I couldn't come up with a description, but I think I like that one. <laughs> well, that might describe Shane's music. Next week, when we finish our visit with Shane, he'll talk about orchestrating with your guitar. And if you got... It's like I had a little bit of a horn section, isn't it? Because it just sustains. I don't know, you fit them all together. And the type of sidemen you need to truly support your music. His intensity of his play will accompany you and enhance you. It's going to be good stuff. Check it out on Barefoot Music News. Wonder now, wonder now, about all those